So it's it's that strategy of catering to the needs of different uh, segments, and that's why uh, of late, over the last four four years or so, we also marched into the dairy category to further diversify our our portfolio. Mm. We used the the strength uh, of uh, the businesses uh, that we have in uh, marine as uh, well canned seafood and canned meats um, to build inroads into dairy and we've been very successful at it in just a short period of time uh, our market share uh, is already um, uh, above 20 percent about 20 to 22 23 percent uh, market share in powdered milk and um, oh. that we're now the number two brand in powdered milk uh, in in that space of time And because we have like a range of products from mass market to uh, premium items, as they, if in good times, as they upgrade from, let's say, mass market product to uh, more premium products, there are brands and offerings uh, within our portfolio that consumers uh, uh, buy. And as a result, we were seeing or seeing the benefit uh, of such a strategy. Now, I'm so curious about this now, as an executive, of one of the largest corporations in the Philippines. If you would start a business tomorrow and you have a choice for a business partner, uh, who would you pick? Elon Musk or Steve Jobs and why? Yeah, very interesting question. Um, I think I'm biased towards uh, Steve Jobs because Mm. I, I greatly admire his ability to really think out of the box and be more inclusive in terms of his innovation. So mm-hmm. when he was tinkering and thinking about like, you know, the, the industry and the technologies that he was going to develop, there wasn't much technology around that would mm-hmm. help him create a right? But at the same time, what he was able to do really affects and impacts the lives of everyone uh, in many, if not all aspects of their lives. Like if they want to look for a recipe for example or figure out what stock to buy or so it's multifaceted impact on the lives of humanity and that's why I, I, I choose uh, Steve Jobs because of the the ex- expanse of his imagination and I think no parang there, there are different variants of each uh, generation uh, maybe Steve Jobs was 10 15 years earlier right, and then right. now you have a, a different iteration of it but I like right. what you said because how would the lockdowns be if we don't have iPhone right. or iPad how correct. would correct. How, how would we do all of the contact tracing now that everything that you do na scan you see right. QR codes and all are done via phones now uh, we're not here to talk about Apple <laughs> we're here to talk about CNPF yeah. and I want to go to the meat of uh, the discussion no a, a, a lot of companies uh, in 2020 their sales were hit uh, right. and then they needed to create measures somehow to make things uh, to, to thrive and survive uh, were there certain items or things that you did during the pandemic that even after the lockdowns are over uh, everyone goes back again that you will still still keep uh, moving forward and in in certain ways no i have seen some companies that sabi nila dahil nagtipid sila kahit mas mahina yung sales nila the bottom line was still relatively better because they were able to find creative ways in order for them to uh, somehow no uh, reduce their expenses were were there any uh, items like that also that you were able to implement uh, for 2020 Right. So efficiency is always, uh, there's a drive towards efficiency throughout, whether there is a crisis or otherwise. So we've always been finding ways to operate the plant in a more efficient way, uh, whether through, uh, let's say, production design or even investments in uh, technologies. So there's always a pursuit towards being able to produce and make and manufacture our products, I guess, in a more sustainable way, in a more efficient way. So regardless of situation or environment that's something that we pursue but the things that um, we adopt uh, we had to adopt to dur- because of the pandemic uh, I think are more in terms of building markets uh, one of the things of course is building a uh, e-commerce digital channel mm-hmm. um, our product isn't exactly uh, you know like a, the, the type of product that you would buy normally in uh, let's say digitally or online mm-hmm. uh, but we saw the need now to 
to get into it and to grow it. And I think that's something that we will continue uh, this beyond beyond the pandemic and beyond lockdowns. Uh, other things, of course, would be uh, continuing to invest in uh, the health and safety of our employees. Um, we saw that they're more productive if you provide them vitamins, <laughs> uh, if you provide them like uh, tips and uh, I guess uh, insights on how to stay healthy. Um, and I think that's that's going to have to continue. Um, but more importantly, I guess it's it's really being able to find ways to uh, continue to engage with our consumer. Um, we've had to pivot from being very heavily skewed towards, let's say, traditional media mm. to to being it's, uh, a good mix of uh, digital as well as online. Uh, means of communication or connecting with our consumers so so it's not a big shift um, but but I, I think those are the things that uh, we will continue to do beyond 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 the pandemic got it um, you you mentioned about uh, you mentioned about e-commerce and online um, you have a very very strong presence in stores that um, a lot of people when they when they go to a shelf they already know uh, what they're supposed to pick up they don't some don't actually choose anymore but when it's online uh, do you have a strategy or a plan that you want to also take a big jump in this space and go directly to consumer um, I guess it's it's more of a con- we're we're providing platforms for consumers to choose uh, and then we're letting them choose whether they want to, to do it and shop it from the supermarket, sorry, sorry, store grocery, or they want to buy it uh, online. Um, it's, it, we try to really invest in being able to uh, have best foot forward in whatever platform. And it's, it's up to them to choose. And the, the strategy is really just uh, be, being present presenting the product in a in, in the most presentable and let's say appetizing way possible uh, having a good balance and yeah it, it, everything you know uh, let's say works uh, because consumers now tend to do like omni-channel type of uh, shopping so it uh, sometimes they they go digital sometimes they go uh, offline and uh, the objective for us is to try to efficiently be in uh, as many in in those channels where the consumer touch points are. So, our truth to tell, our digital business is, is small in the meantime, uh, but uh, but growing very fast. So let's see where that go- where that's going to hit. But we're not purposively you know by trying to just push it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's making sure that what the consumers or We've been looking at consumers, consumer trends and how they shop and figure out how to uh, stay engaged. I want to take a step back that when you did your IPO, uh, I, th- I think seven years ago, uh, when they said it was Century, uh, at the top of my head, it was just Century Tuna. But when I started to look in deeper, there was a variety of brands there. Right. And then when I, when I studied further, I was shocked that you also own Blue Bay. <laughs> so that's basically... <laughs> the whole tuna market already or a, a very very Majority, large chunk yeah, of the right. tuna market in the Philippines uh, right. I, I guess my question there was what was the what was the strategy behind the acquisition and right. w- why why would you go with uh, the same line but a different brand as you know the Philippine uh, demographic is diverse so there's like mm-hmm. uh, of course the upper income middle income low income and um in terms of preferences as well in psychographic uh, let's say segmentations there are those who are more into like culinary experiences and there are those who are more into sports health and fitness and um, there are those that are more into just you know uh, plain plain simple uh, uh, type of uh, <laughs> mentality so we, we looked at it and um, we knew that it's important for uh, a company or any company to be able to do well in a particular segment but wouldn't it be better if you're able to do well in multiple segments um, so that's the strategy so we have multiple brands catering to different uh, demographics so from uh, mass market all the way to premium uh, uh, consumers um, and uh, different 
let's say types of needs and uh, different and even different uh, nutritional requirements that's why we've diversified their portfolio to not just be tuna uh, we are mostly well known for century tuna but and but we do have several brands under the tuna, tuna category in uh, compliance, I guess, or in alignment with that objective of serving the different segments within a particular category. But we do also have like a very uh, rich um, a portfolio in canned meats. So Argentina uh, is is the brand that uh, uh, is a market leading brand in canned meat, and there are several products under Argentina from corned beef all the way to luncheon meats and liver spreads and Vienna sausage and all that. And not too many people really realize that uh, the makers of Century are also the makers of Argentina. And we've been able to build a big um, portfolio of uh, canned seafood as well as uh, canned meat products. Uh, 555 Sardines is also ours. And um, um, several other meat brands. So as you mentioned, Blue Bay in Tuna. Uh, we also have 555. In canned meats, we have, um, we have uh, Argentina. But we also have uh, 555 as well in our uh, as one of our canned meat products so it's it's that strategy of catering to the needs of different uh, segments and that's why uh, of late over the last four four years or so we also marched into the dairy category to further diversify our, our portfolio we used the the strength uh, of uh, the businesses uh, that we have in uh, marine as well as canned seafood and canned meats um, to build inroads into dairy and we've been very successful at it in just a short period of time uh, our market share uh, is already uh, uh, above 20 percent about 20 to 22 23 percent uh, market share in powdered milk and oh. um, that we're now the number two brand in powdered milk uh, in in that space of time so and it allows us to uh, live our corporate purpose of to nourish and delight uh, ev everyone ev everywhere every day uh, by having that portfolio. Right. And and what's interesting about that? Just just talking about Century and and Blue Bay from a from a consumer standpoint, it's as if you're buying competitors but if you're an investor whatever you pick we make we, we make we we uh, the, as an investor the company will do very very well uh, because you, you're just choosing between two brands of the same company as well uh, and I, I, I'm not sure if you mentioned this uh, from the from the meat standpoint also uh, aside from Argentina you also have Swift so I think you have something Swift. for the mass market and then something also premium. for I think something that's a bit a bit premium and yeah right. so it, I, I think it's totally amazing because uh as the country or the population gets bigger, which the trajectory is, we will get bigger. Uh, the consumption of these items, even at the worst pandemics, you see that people are 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 going into it. Um, right. My 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 question on top of that is, Century Tuna and the brands that you have, you're you're heavily known as a very very uh, strong brand. What what led to the success? of that especially uh, when Century Tuna started uh, decades ago uh, no one knew about it how, how was how did it be, how did it become a very very strong brand at what led to the success okay. of, of the company as a whole okay uh, I think we can we can I, I can reply to that question in I guess in a few layers mm -hmm. uh, starting off uh, with uh, many years back, I guess 40 years or so back, our founder uh, Ricardo Po um, uh, realized that there was a category or there was a market for canned uh, tuna here in the Philippines. Uh, but he saw that everyone was importing product mostly from the USA and he said, well, this is a good product. Uh, and Tuna is actually caught here in the Philippines. It's sent to the U.S. and can't there. So, why not? Why not make it here? So he figured out ways by which you know uh, to make it happen, um, and uh, the Century brand was uh, born. He named it Century because he said, "I want this brand to last a hundred years." <laughs> so, so 
um, it didn't really catch on immediately um, mm-hmm. because here's a locally made product competing against uh, foreign brands. But then he realized as well that Filipinos, the the palate of the Filipinos are very flavorful. They like to have like uh, to, to enjoy what they're eating in terms of taste. So, sabi niya, pwede, I can innovate by way of uh, keep tailor fitting the rec- the taste uh, of of my product to what consumers like. And he started to introduce flavored uh, tuna, mm-hmm. mga adobo, hot and spicy, as we talked about earlier. Uh, and then, both that, of course, he also had the uh, flakes in oil uh, product. And then he innovated by way of communicating how to consume the product before most consumers would. And even now in the Western countries, consumers eat tuna with just as a sandwich and with salad. He introduced ways by which you can consume tuna with rice. Mm. So he used endorsers like uh, Gloria Diaz, <laughs> uh, Sharon Cuneta, etc. You know, talking about many ways by which you can enjoy tuna. And it clicked. Consumers realized, oh, nga, this is a good source of protein. Mm. And um, that kind of snowballed after the taste era of you know like getting people into into eating tuna. Uh, this idea of because of the many health benefits of tuna, omega three, DHA. Uh, it's low cal. It's a low calorie protein, low calorie, low fat protein. Uh, we latched on to a consumer trend of wanting to be fit and healthy, and uh, there came about the idea of super buds. <laughs> so, so Super Buds is one of the like iconic, uh, let's say, uh, marketing pillars uh, of any brand, or, or or especially of the Century Tuna brand. And it's mm-hmm. it's it's one of the equity pillars of the Century brand that easily communicates the health benefits of uh, the uh, tuna product mm-hmm. attributed to the Century uh, brand name. So. Uh, I think it has a very strong heritage in terms of taste, uh, ways by which you can enjoy tuna, and uh, on a backdrop of the, the more you eat it, the healthier you can be. So uh, th- I think that's what's driving the success of uh, the Century Tuna brand and what continues to drive the success of the Century Tuna brand. How do you leverage on that uh, to make the company grow further? Uh, right. in the next five to ten years and as part of the leadership of the company how do you see the company uh, move forward especially uh, that I, I believe there were some tweakings also that were done uh, during this pandemic uh, how do you how do you, how do you see it uh, right. affect the company in the next years yeah so uh, like what we said during the IPO that we wanted to grow 10 to 15 percent per year um, we, just, we, we continue to have that vision. So we've been able to prove we were able to double the business in five years. If you go by that uh, trajectory, uh, you'll be able to continue to double the business over the next five to 10 years. And that's, that's, that, that's the objective, I'm doubling it every five, or five, every five years or so. But if you have that type of like an objective, you kailangan pupunuan mo na ngayon ng, <laughs> ng mga plan and program. So, uh, one, of course, is to continue strengthening our core brand, Century Tuna, Argentina. Uh, the key pillars that we've been using uh, uh, is in alignment with consumer trends, what consumers are looking for. More and more consumers are looking for um, healthier ways of eating, uh, living healthier lifestyle, um, and um, overall wellness. And the brands that we have, like Century, of course, spot on. We're among the uh, few brands in the country that um, that you know that squarely addresses that uh, consumer requirement. Uh, Argentina, of course, also has iron and zinc, uh, so it's a delightful way to uh, to eat. Uh, you know, to have like a, a appetizing and a healthy, uh, nourishing uh, meal. And then we've started to layer products uh, and categories along those lines. One, of course, is milk. We went into the dairy category, but it's not just for flavor. Um, uh, when we went into powdered milk, we were first to uh, to move in terms of presenting uh, birch tree powdered milk as fortified. And so it was already nutrient-rich and uh, nutrient-dense uh, milk product uh, that 
the consumers automatically latched onto and we've innovated further by uh, going into adult uh, uh, virtually adult booths for example which allows uh, uh, let's say a more uh, uh, let's say the younger adults to stay healthy and fit especially now during a pandemic mm -hmm. so continue innovating on the health aspects of our products um, finding new opportunities uh, such as um, uh, in the culinary space as well as in uh, on the flavor space for example we went into coconut uh, milk mm -hmm. <laughs> gata under the coco mama mm -hmm. brand uh, which has been also very successful for us um, uh, timing was perfect when we were rolling out uh, the pandemic started to uh, uh, show its reveal its uh, impact and nature on the on the consumer household, and they found the convenience and the natural taste of uh, coconut uh, gata in a pack very convenient. They don't have to go anymore to a wet market and expose themselves to let's say to COVID. Um, they could just buy it from the grocery, and it 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 really looked and tasted. Uh, it tastes like uh, real gata, so which it is. So innovations, um, strengthening the core, uh, and e expanding our consumer base is is the way forward for us uh, to to sustain the growth. Got it. Uh, I'm I'm curious about this. Here in the Philippines, uh, we were surprised that there's like uh, a big interest. Also among flexitarians, parang okay, okay, I'm plant-based because on some days I can have my burger, my meat, and all of that. But I also want to, you know, be able to uh, eat healthier, a bit healthier by way of uh, plant-based food. And when I do, wala ako mahanap na brand or producto na reliable. And and that's the space that Unmeat, uh, I think, uh, wants to be able to uh, to occupy. Mm -hmm.